I feel that the U.S. are going to be doing the same thing with John Graham's extradition process as they did with, with Leonard Peltier, using an affidavit which was proven false, which the woman tried to recant at trial and couldn't because of mental incompetency, but the original was allowed to stand. And they used that to convict Leonard Peltier. They used it to extradite him with. When the extradition hearings took place, the request to extradite Peltier would likely have been refused, he said. Victoria-based lawyer Gary Bodine has studied Canada's extradition process extensively. He wrote his doctor thesis on it. The Leonard Peltier case played a key role, a paper he describes as a cautionary tale, and one that bodes badly for John Graham. The whole reputation of the FBI is at stake. Well, maybe the reputation of the FBI should be at stake because they did screw up. And not only did they screw up, they screwed up deliberately in the, in the Peltier case. And how do we know that the FBI hasn't done exactly the same thing, manipulating the evidence in the Graham case? Bodine says flimsy evidence is enough to send someone like Graham packing to an American prison because, he says, Canadian courts refuse to stand up to U.S. pressure. Bodine has seen it over and over again. He's worked on 10 extradition cases. He's lost every one. The cards are really stacked against the individual who is um, being extradited. There's uh, not a lot that he can do in order to defend himself. In 1999, Ottawa passed a new extradition act. It was supposed to be fairer, stronger, allowing lawyers more options to fight to keep their clients in Canada. The first legitimate level where an individual gets a fair hearing in a court is at the Court of Appeal level with judicial review. Ultimately, the final say under the new act rests with just one person, the Federal Minister of Justice. The biggest silver lining that I can see is the identity of the Minister of Justice himself, and that is uh, Irvin Kotler, who has a, a strong reputation as a human rights lawyer. Irvin Kotler is still new to his cabinet post, and he's not saying much right now, except that the Graham file is under review. Bodine says the case will be a test of the Minister's strength. Show us your stuff. Show that you have the gumption and the integrity to stand up to the American government and to the, to the powers that be within your department that uh, want to rubber stamp every extra, extradition case um, just for the sake of comedy and for international um, goodwill. Well, I wanted to talk a bit about the status of the affidavits and the status of the support letters. When First Story returns, friends and family gather to support the man they believe is innocent of murder. people yeah you watch attitudes down here each day John Graham walks this route as part of his bail conditions along with him are two of the five people who have to supervise him 24 7 also on this trip he's accompanied by his daughter and sister Fran Asp who have traveled from the Yukon to show their support seven days a week he has to sign in with the Vancouver Police Department to make sure he doesn't flee. Well, tell me some stories. Uh, what's happening at home, people? Uh, you don't want to know. What's <laughs> who I've been meeting at? Where's Julene up to? Under house arrest, John Graham meets with old friends and family, reminiscing and learning about the people from back home in the Yukon. Some are just visiting for the weekend, like his former partner, Viola Papaquash. I'd lived with John for 20 years, and um, yeah, he was probably always going to be his friend and, and part of his family. After John Graham left Pine Ridge and Wounded Knee, he took the teachings of AIM and continued its work throughout Canada. He met Viola in Saskatchewan. Any kind of First Nation issues or struggles that we talked about or made people aware of was uh, it was uh, Leonard's struggle and Anna May's struggle, I guess, and story was always was always part of that. There was never any question in my mind that, that AIM would ever be involved in anything like that, you know, especially for, um, you know, killing one of their own. This just didn't seem, doesn't seem possible. This is called Heaven's Name. The support for John Graham is growing. 
Friends and family are now in the process of raising money for his legal defense, not only in Vancouver, but throughout the world. Well, John was involved in, in what was one of the most fu fundamental, uh, significant events and series of events that have occurred in contemporary times with Aboriginal people in North America. And it's just uh, ironic and in some ways unfortunate that John, I think, will be instrumental in the completion of much of this. But being wrongfully accused and being a part of the process, if it brings out more truth and knowledge about what happened back then, I think even John will agree it was worthwhile. What do I fear the most? Is that, well, definitely the truth will never come out. As John Graham breathes the fresh Pacific air, the reality of him being sent back across the border hangs over him like a death sentence. I guess lots of people have come out and said this and that and the other thing. Again, like, you know, people who weren't there. What, you know, like they're going on, what, hearsay? This is why, why I'm being put through, what I'm being put through, why my family is being ripped apart on the hearsay. That's not right. And, you know, and who are these people? This is the type of case that a, a judge would say, we're, we're going to take this away from the jury and, and then go to the minister and say, look, at if, if you think some minimal standard has been met, the history of this case is so fraught with inconsistency and, and bad politics and, and disreputable people um, that you should not send a Canadian citizen down to meet the fate of Arlo Looking Cloud. The spirit of Annie Mae Ashcroft will protect Mr. Graham if he is innocent. If he is not, then he will be convicted in due process. In death, Annie Mae has accomplished much. Her memory is now the stuff of legend. A woman remembered for her strength and commitment to the struggles of Aboriginal people. As for John Graham, his future is uncertain. Is he the next Leonard Peltier? Perhaps only Anna May's spirit knows. John Graham is losing hope and running out of time. A man facing a final fight of a battle that started on the South Dakota grasslands so many years ago.